Hi, I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. This time we're going to create a gradient map shader. It's pretty much the same as gradient mapping in Photoshop, GIMP and other image manipulation software. Next time we're going to create a lookup table shader and the gradient map is kinda like a very simple version of that. An introduction to recoloring so to speak. But as always a short disclaimer first. This tutorial series is mainly for hobby programmers who struggle with understanding shaders. I'm not a professional programmer and I'm not very good at maths. So if you see any mistake in my video or see a better way to solve a problem, please add a comment so everyone can learn from you. Let's start with a quick explanation. Gradient maps are very similar to duotoning, a topic we covered in one of the first videos in this series. We got an image and a gradient. What gradient mapping does is replace the color values of the image with the colors of the gradient map. In this example, the gradient is just half black, half white. So if we apply this gradient, every pixel darker than 0.5 will turn into black and everything above will turn into white. If we change the dark color to a dark blue and the light color to a light yellow and apply the gradient map now, every dark pixel turns into dark blue and every light pixel will turn into light yellow. But we can also change the gradient style from hard to smooth RGB and the result will be smooth as well. And this would be a clockwise HSV gradient and this an anti-clockwise HSV gradient. So as mentioned, it's similar to do a toning, but with two main practical differences. In one way it's worse because it's more difficult to create an effect that dynamically changes in runtime. In example, it's more difficult to smoothly change those colors every frame. You'd need different gradient maps and interpolate between them. And in one way it's better though because it's easier to get different colors into one gradient. In duotoning we usually have a dark color and a light color and interpolate. But with gradient maps we can add different colors in between without coding anything to make it work. Now let's have a look at the project file. We won't need much for this tutorial. This is the sprite we're going to draw with the gradient map. And here is the gradient sprite. It has to be on a separate texture page, needs to be square and its sides need to be any 2 to the power of n. The one I'm using is only 8x8 8 8 pixels large. You can use larger maps though if you need more detail in your gradients. Each row of pixels is one gradient, so we got these gradients on the map. A blue gradient, golden, rainbow, dusk, dawn, grayscale, black and white, and finally black and white inverted. So you see the gradients aren't smooth, but texture interpolation will take care of that. Here's the shader we're going to use, and the object. We're going to look at those two later. And this is the room. Under GUI layers we got three sliders, a single toggle button to turn the linear texture interpolation filter on or off, two trigger buttons which do nothing and are just used as labels, and two more toggle groups to dynamically change the gradients. And on the main layer is the gradient map test object. I'm going to show a simple and a more complicated version built upon it. The simple version first. In the object's create event, as always, I got a title and information region with some shader unrelated stuff. And in the GUI region, I set up the sliders, toggles and triggers for the demo project to run. Not important for the tutorial though. In the sprite and shader region, I've set the sprite we're going to draw. And that's the droids on Tatooine photo. And the gradient sprite with one gradient per pixel row. Then the shader and some uniforms for the shader. Mix amount will mix the result with the base color so we can change the strength of the effect dynamically. Map index is an integer referring to the pixel row, so 0 refers to the topmost row on the gradient map, that's the blue gradient, and sprite height minus 1 would refer to the last row, that's the black and white inverted gradient. Texel height is the height of a texel on the gradient sprite, and gradient text is the texture ID. And two variables that don't need to change dynamically, we can already get gradient text and texel height in creative event. Now draw event is really simple too. I've commented out everything we need for the second version only. So for now we just need two dynamic variables. Mix map 0 is taken from slider 0 and ranges from 0 to 1. This will be the mix amount to mix the base color with the mapped result. So 0 means only the base color shows and 1 means only the mapped result shows. Map index 0 is taken from toggle group 0. If toggle button 0 is active then map index 0 will be 0. If toggle button 1 is active, then map index 0 will be 1, and so on. With this variable, we'll tell the shader on what pixel row the gradient is. 
Then before drawing we set the GPU's linear texture interpolation filter according to another toggle button so we can dynamically turn the filter on or off. And in the last code line we'll set it to false because my demo project is usually running without. To draw the image remapped we can now set the shader, pass in the uniforms for the mix amount, the map index and the texel height, set the texture stage for the gradient sprite, draw the image and reset the shader. Very simple. Now let's have a look at the shader code. The vertex shader is just a pass-through shader, so we can close it already. And here's the fragment shader. Here as well I commented out all lines of code used for the second version. In the header we need to declare the four uniforms. The float mix amount, the float map index, the float texel height and the sampler 2D gradient text. Then inside the main function we first need to get the base color as a vec4 and the value of that collar as a float by getting the dot product of the base collar and the NTSC vector as we did so often before. And now we can already get the output collar. The output needs to be a VEC4 collar, made of an RGB collar and the alpha of the base image. The RGB value is a mix of the base collar's RGB and the remapped version of the same collar. To map the collar we need to take a sample from the gradient texture. The sample's x coordinate is just the value of the base color. So if the base color is black, then the value is 0, and therefore the x coordinate to take the gradient sample from is 0 as well, which means we're taking a sample from the leftmost pixel on the gradient sprite. If the base color is white, then its value is 1, and the x coordinate to take the gradient sample from is 1, which means we're taking a sample from the rightmost pixel on the gradient sprite. And if the base color value is 0.5, then the x coordinate will be 0.5 as well. The y coordinate is 0.5 plus map index times texel height. So if map index is 0 and texel height is 0.125, then the y coordinate would be 0.5 plus 0 times 0.125 equals 0.0625, or 1 16th. Or if map index is 2, then the y coordinate would be 0.5 plus 2 times 0.125 equals 0.3125. And if map index is 7, then the y coordinate would be 0.5 plus 7 times 0.125 equals 15 16. If we wouldn't add the 0.5 to the map index, we'd take samples between the pixel rows and thus, with, in example, a map index of 2, we wouldn't get the rainbow gradient. We'd get an interpolated color between the golden gradient and the rainbow gradient. So we got base called RGB and the remapped version of it. Now we can mix it by mix amount to get the output RGB. The lower mix amount is, the more of base color will show, and the larger mix amount is, the more of the remapped version will show. Now let's run this. For now, only the first slider, the filter toggle, and the map zero index are in. With the slider, we can set the mix amount. With the filter toggle, we can turn the linear texture interpolation on or off. And with the map index toggles, we can change the map index, showing the different gradients in the gradient sprite. Our limitation for now is, we can only mix the base color with a gradient mapped color. Now we're going to improve that a little bit. I want to use two maps, mix each with the base color to get two new colors, and mix those two again. Like this, we'll be able to tween from one gradient to another. We won't need to change anything in the object's create event, so let's just tweak the draw event a little bit. Mix map 0 will still mix the base color with a gradient map. Mix map 1 will do the same, but with a second gradient map. But now we also need a mix value to mix the two mapped results. Map index 0 is still the index of the first gradient map, and we need a second map index for the second gradient now. In the draw region, we're now passing in several values for mix amount and map index. Mix map 0, mix map 1, and mix maps as mix amounts, and map index 0 and map index 1 for the two gradient maps. In the shaders header, we now need to adapt the uniforms. Mix amount now needs to be a vec3, and map index a vec2. And inside the main function, we now have to get the first mapped color. The code to that is pretty much the same as before mix base color RGB with the gradient maps color at map index 0 by mix amount 0. Then the second mapped color, mix base color RGB with the gradient maps color at map index 1 by mix amount 1. And the output is a mix of map color 0 and map color 1 by mix amount 2. 
and of course, with the base colors alpha. Now let's run this again. Now we can use all the sliders and buttons. The first slider mixes the base color with map 0, the second slider mixes the base color with map 1, and the third slider mixes the two mapped colors. Like this we can gradually tween from one state to another. So I guess the complicated version is not much more complicated, but much more flexible. And that's it for this video already. It's a really simple shader, but understanding this will greatly help understanding the next tutorial where we'll create a lookup table shader. I hope you liked this video and are excited about the next one. Until next time.